Shout out Sniper T on the beat. Tamara to the break of dawn is on the rise with life on the forefront of the mind. So line for line, you can ride this brain train and you can change your station without even touching the dial. So relax, stay a little bit, but listen for a while. And whether you're bumping this in the whip or in a business fit, it's a meeting you won't want to miss. A meeting for a meal to feed the soul with words for the mind. So sit back, enjoy the ride, time to take off, it's time to fly, cause Tamara till the break of dawn is on the ride. Hey y'all, hey, it's me, Tamara. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you for the warm welcome, y'all. So, thank you so much for tuning in, welcome to the show, to all my new listeners, new episodes drop every Thursday, so come on back through, generally talk about my life and the ways I'm trying to grow, and then I'll have other topics and guests here and there. To all my regular supporters, y'all already know what it is, I appreciate your support, If you're not, you should totally be following me on social media, and the link to my social media is in the episode notes. It says YouTube and social media links. Speaking of YouTube, you should definitely subscribe to my YouTube if you have not already, and if you don't know who Pintam Z is, you've probably been under the rock in my guy Pimrose voice. So, Pintam Z is a poetry collective. If you're a regular supporter of the shows, follow me on social media, whatever, you know that I've had a couple of audible expressions nights, as I like to call them, spoken word nights with myself, Penrose, who was another content creator, and then my really good friend, but also spoken word artist and so many other different talents, um, LNZ. So the three of us have got together twice so far. We do have another Audible Expressions Night coming up on Friday, February 25th. So that'll be at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, 6 Pacific. But the reason I'm bringing all of that up as I'm speaking about my YouTube that you should totally subscribe to is every week on Wednesday, the Wednesday Word, one of us will drop a piece. And so yesterday, Penrose kicked it off with Random Thoughts. It's on my YouTube channel, YouTube Exclusive. All live shows that I host, even if I host podcast happy hour, it's going to be YouTube exclusive. So you definitely want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which the link to that is in the episodes as well. It says YouTube and social media takes you to my link tree, which has all the links to all the important ways that I feel like you can support or different social media pages you can follow or whatever. So go ahead and get into that. And while you're there, Yeah, so while you're there, you should totally check out some Melon Intoxicate, you know what I'm saying? Um, So the link to that is in the episode notes. I do have some a new design coming out next month. It's going to be kind of like the, I guess, PG version of So Dope You Get High in a sense, because I, I am aware just by talking to some of my friends and stuff that Some people, you know, they can't wear that type of message, but I am very much the kind of person that can say the same thing many different ways. So I took like no offense to that. I just took that as, okay, well, let me cater to those people. So I have another design coming out next month and it's Black History Month. Y'all know, you know what I'm saying? So people be out here. (laughs) Woo! I'm a, I'm a wait on that. I'm a wait on that. It's Black History Month, though. Support a black business. Support a black owned business. Support a um, small business. Whatever category you want to fit it under. Support your girl. You know what I'm saying. This episode. Oh yes, thank y'all. Thank y'all. This episode. I'm gonna just go ahead and get into it. Um. <sighs> Haven't done a pot, I mean, not a podcast, haven't done a Petty Tam Tam Chronicles in a while. And it's crazy because when I was, it's just, it's time. There's so many things that either I've experienced or I've seen on social media or whatever. And when I was kind of putting all this stuff together, I started really thinking like, but is it petty if it's true? But I'm going to still call it the Petty Tam Tam Chronicles. Therefore, 
I mean, so that my regular uh, supporters already know the vibes of the episode. But if you're new to the show, basically, like I said, I talk about my life and the ways that I'm trying to grow for the most part. But then sometimes um, I will see things or I will experience things. And it's almost like a rant episode in a way. But one thing about me is I don't really just be out here bashing anybody. If I come for somebody or if I, I feel like there should be a pause there just because of how long I drug out that, um, come or whatever, pause again. But, um, anytime I do, it's, it's under the, what you're doing is unhealthy. What you're doing is harmful. Otherwise I don't be worried about what other people do, but I'm very much big on being healthy for ourselves, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, but then also in our relationships. I mean, bruh, we in year 59 of the pandemic, like we got enough going on with our own lives, whatever, not to have some of the stuff that I have been seeing or even going through. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let me see. I I got a list, y'all. I got a list of a few things that I, what the heck is, sorry, I have a list of a few things that I want to talk about. I made a list because I didn't want to forget anything. And I'm going to start here since I started to go there earlier when I was talking about supporting a black owned business. It is very, very interesting. You could almost call this a thoughts to ponder, especially if you've done this. It's very, very interesting when you are someone who, let's say you make a social media post and you're like, man, I just found this black owned business on social media. And, you know, I had to support them because I love supporting black owned business. Da, 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 da. Meanwhile, you have a friend that has a black owned business that you have never supported. And it's not like you haven't seen their stuff on social media because you do interact with their content or their their posts or whatever. I just I say content so much. Not everybody sees everything as content, but it really is. Anything you put on social media is content. But you you interact with their posts, but you've never purchased anything from them. And I think that's interesting. I think it's interesting when people say they're going to support and then they don't and then you see them support someone else. And these are not necessarily things that have happened, eh, kind of, but these are just things I've noticed just on this journey. Even I still have podcast merchandise. I just don't really promote it. I have it on my website. So if any of y'all, maybe you don't want to support Melon Intoxicate for whatever reason, but you still want to support, you can go to my website. The link to that is in the episode notes. And you can um, purchase some, you know, some podcast merchandise. There's also, what did I keep up there? Wake and Create. uh, I Create Dope Content, I think is what the other one said. And then there's like, you know, Tamara to the Break It Down merchandise. Um, It's all good quality stuff. Even the Melon Intoxicate. Teespring is the e-commerce site that I use. I like the quality of their stuff. It, you know, like the hoodies on the inside, it's soft. It's, you know, doesn't get the beaded beads. You know what I'm saying? After you wash it a few times, none of my stuff from other podcasters that I've bought who also use Teespring, everything I've bought from other people, washed it several times. I've worn it several times. It still looks good. So it's, you know, good quality stuff. Um, so if you want to do that, but this is just stuff I've experienced where, I just think it's wow. And I've been a lot more frustrated by a lot more things because I'm on social media a lot more because one, I post a lot, but when I'm working, (laughs) my work day has to factor in allowing myself to be distracted by social media. So like I factor in that I'm going to have these ADD moments where I'm going to get on Twitter or I'm going to do whatever. And it just is what it is. And Yeah, man, you got to stop. I don't understand that because I've had this conversation with people and people have said like, oh, that's not your friend or whatever. And man, you hate to think that, but it's kind of like 
there are people that I've, I don't know. And I'm not going to say I buy everything from everybody. Cause like, I really just don't got it like that. There's stuff, there's people that I have it on my, I'm going to support them. I just, I don't, y'all know what's crazy is as I've chosen different people to like be a, a model, as I like to call it, because either who they are, I pay, I pay attention to who pays attention to their platform or whatever. And these are not just necessarily content creators. And so as I've, you know, given merchandise for that, now people have bought stuff. Don't get me wrong. December was a better month than January has been so far, but I know there's going to be the ebbs and flows or whatever. So it it is what it is. You just got to keep going. Plus I just started, you know what I'm saying? But, um, other people if have more merchandise than me if i think about the people that i've sent out stuff to cuz it's like i want other like people who see me I, I the same people already already see, i mean the same people already see my stuff you know what i mean so it's kind of like i'm trying to get new exposure i'm trying to get new eyes on my stuff and so i've chosen different people as models or whatever so it's kind of like yeah, I haven't been in a position lately to really buy anything from anybody, but I know that I've purchased things from people in the past and it's just been very, very interesting. And I'm sure they felt this same way. Like it just is what it is when you're an entrepreneur. Like it's not a journey for the the faint at heart. You know what I'm saying? And I share this with y'all because I talk about my life and the ways I'm trying to grow. So I'm always going to be transparent about whatever but I also want to shatter the misconception that just because I post on social media every day, just because y'all see me elevating with that or elevating with the way the the post looks, you know what I'm saying? We've rebranded Tamara the Dawn Inc. and this, that, and the other, and Melon Intoxicate. I don't just post clothes. I put I create memes to like encourage people because that's just who I am. I can't not try to encourage people. You know what I'm saying? So for those of y'all that are new, don't let this petty episode fool you because at the end of the day, I'm saying this because I just want people to think like, bruh, you should be supporting your friends if they're really your friends. And it doesn't even have to be spending money, interacting with their content. I post videos and I could see how many views, and I'm more so talking to my Facebook friends that may be listening. Like, if you're thinking of a way, like, you don't have to buy anything from me. Share my post. That is helpful because though you may not want or be able to whatever, or even if you like it, it helps with the algorithm, algorithm or if you comment to get the content out there. You know what I'm saying? So many people... They look at your stuff. They're even inspired by your stuff, but they'll have you thinking they didn't even see it. But the thing I love about Facebook is that posts don't tell you how many people saw it. Video views always tell you how many people viewed the video. And it's always different than how many people interacted with it. I'm really struggling. So y'all out here watching but trying to pretend like you're not you know what i'm saying and i've even gotten better at i definitely already do this on twitter i already do this on you can't really share on instagram but liking or whatever people's stuff but i've even gotten better at that on facebook i'll share people's stuff to my facebook like the same stuff that y'all content creators know that i do because i do it on twitter that's why i love twitter I've been trying to do that more for some of my Facebook friends just because I I don't really trip off the Facebook people. I'm I'm saying, yeah, this is how you can be helpful because I'm trying to be proactive with telling you how you can be helpful. But I don't really trip off that because the podcast community is so supportive and I've found like my network of people. So like, yeah, I'm going to share stuff on Facebook. Yeah, I'm a whatever. But if I'm honest, folks weren't like have not really ever supported creative endeavors. Um, and even with the company stuff, I pay attention to who shares other people's stuff. I, like I pay attention to all that. And it could be somebody that I know that we have a mutual friend that is doing something and you will share their post. You know what I'm saying? 
I see all that. You know what I mean? It just is what it is. I don't trip off of it because I have the support, but I am trying to be supportive to people because I'm I'm seeing a lot more people complaining about the entrepreneurial journey and how like frustrating it could be when if you post your kids, you get hundreds of likes. And that's literally, if I post a picture of my kids right now, everybody and their mama will like it, comment how, oh my gosh, how are they so grown, blah, blah, blah. Y'all Facebook friends with them too. You see what it is. You know what I'm saying? But let me post about my my podcast, Crickets, Crickets. Let me post about Melanin Toxicate. Maybe every now and then get a like or two. Let me post about Tamara the Dawn Inc. I was actually hella surprised that I posted... Uh, I created like a commercial or whatever, just a video talking about the current services that we are offering. I mean, accepting clients for. And I was surprised how many people liked that video because I usually post that stuff and like nobody pays attention to it. But I just keep going because people are watching. You know, I get people that will will have these conversations in DMs or they'll see me somewhere and it's like, oh. I listen to your podcast. Oh, I this, but they don't never interact with it. So I don't really trip off that stuff, but I always make everything as a teachable moment. And I also feel like I'm very, 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 very grateful for the support that I do get. And I do get support. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like it all equals out. But again, man, people brag about (laughs) supporting their strangers on the internet they found this black owned business and they don't support their friends. And I, I'm not the only person that feels that way because I see it talked about. And then when I tweeted about it recently, because I tweet it, sometimes I'll tweet about stuff before, like if it's going to be a topic on it, like this petty Tim, Tim episode has been like in the makings or whatever. I just have to have enough things that I really want to kind of, go in on about or whatever, but I tweeted about it and it's just interesting how many responses, how many retweets, whatever that like, you know, so you just got to think about it and that may not change anything, but I'm, I'm still going to speak on it. Like that's just, that's just who I am. I speak on what I feel like is right. And so with that, let let's stay on this entrepreneurial podcaster, blogger, brand owner type journey that I am on. And I promise I mean this in the most humble way possible. But if you don't ever speak on me or speak on what I do, it doesn't matter. I don't care. But if you're going to speak on me and you're going to speak on what I do, especially if you're going to try to make it sound like you know something about me, what I need you to do is and I promise I mean this in the most humble way ever, but I need you to put a little bit of respect on who I am and what I'm actually doing. What I mean by that is so many people only talk about how I'm a podcaster. That is great. I have been podcasting for over two years. It is a it has been an amazing journey. I've met amazing people. It is my favorite creative outlet because And it's also really easy. It's kind of one of the easiest things that I do right now as far as creating content because I can just get on the mic and talk. A lot of times I don't have necessarily a structure. I'm just a good conversationalist. And also the premise of this show is you're writing my train of thought. So, you know, obviously people like it because y'all keep coming back. You know what I'm saying? But it just is what it is. But that see y'all i am the ceo and founder of tamra the dawn inc which is a corporation so it's a legit registered in the state of nebraska uh, state of nebraska company yes i live in nebraska just move on from that okay that's number one okay these are things that have nothing to do with podcasting two i am the founder of melon intoxicate which currently it's just a brand but that too will become a corporation. I just am kind of waiting on that. And it'll be a subsidiary of Tamara the Dawn Inc. So Melon Intoxicate is currently a registered trademark of Tamara the Dawn Inc. You know what I'm saying? 
if you're going to speak on me and speak on what I do, don't forget that. I You don't even got to include blogger, but it's a little bit, hmm, I don't think offensive is the right word, but it's like, I need y'all to put some respect on my grind, how much I work hard to put all the content out every day. That in it itself is a lot of work. Then there's like the work that I actually do for my companies, you know what I'm saying? Content may seem like whatever, but it is one of the best ways I feel like in this day and age to get new exposure for your brand because not many people are going to watch TV for like a regular commercial, but pretty much everybody and their mama is either on social media or they know somebody who's on social media. And if they see a product or something relevant, I can't tell you how many times I saw TikTok videos before I was even on there because my kids either sent them to me or showed them to me. That's just the day and age that we're in. So yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into creating content. It's really marketing, you know what I'm saying? I'm leveraging social media content to get more exposure for my brand and company because those are two separate things in hopes that I'll gain new customers or clients. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So like, put some respect on that. I don't get paid to podcast. That'd be dope, but it would depend what that looks like because... I would always want to make sure I have creative freedom and control and whatever, just because this is a therapeutic creative outlet. But yeah, I kind of need y'all to put a little bit of respect on if, if you're going to speak on me, if you don't speak on me, it doesn't matter. But sometimes I'll be in spaces where I'll have a conversation with people. Even when I was talking about like why I left my previous job, because this is all that I do. I don't, work for anybody or any of that. Don't like be impressed by that because it wasn't, yeah, it's been a hell of a journey, but God remains faithful. So it just is what it is. Um, but I'll be in a space where I'm in a conversation with people and I'll be talking about whatever. And they're like, yeah, so you're, you left your job or like, they'll try to tell my story for me and say it like I left my job because of podcasting and what (laughs) like why would I do that you know what I'm saying when again I'm not getting paid for this so that's why I say all that if you don't speak on me or if you don't try to act like you know stuff about me then I don't really care this doesn't even apply to you just move on but if you are going to speak on me you know what I'm saying just put a little bit of respect on like who I am and actually include all of that. Like don't leave off those parts and don't only speak on the parts of, you know what I'm saying? Or, or if you're a podcaster too, because sometimes people will like, I don't know, tweet at me or whatever. And it'll be like, Oh, keep grinding with your podcast. And it's like, um, sure. Of course. But that's not just all who I am. So like, if you're going to, again, if you're going to speak on things, just like include everything, you know what I'm saying? So there's that. Um, Let's see what else is in my notes. Uh, Let's get into, uh, because I have a few things, but we are going to end on a positive note, y'all, because I do, I don't want to leave you just saw me being pettier. Is it petty if it's true though? Like even let's just go back to what I was just saying about like put some respect on like really who I am or whatever. Again, if you know me, those that know me, I'm not one that I don't be sitting around in conversations like, yeah, I'm whatever. Now I will say, okay, put it on my calendar so that it's on my calendar. I have been that way since I was a so only a podcaster because if you don't get it on my calendar, it's not going to happen because I'm going to forget. But yes, I do prioritize my day around whatever I want to do it, how I want to do it, but it needs to be on my calendar so I can create space for it in my day because there is always something to do. You know what I'm saying? And so outside of that, 
there's not really many times that I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm this, that, and the other, because that's just not who I am. But if you are going to speak on me again, I'm not lying when I say I am the founder and CEO of a corporation because Tamara the Don Inc. is an S corporation. You know what I'm saying? And even if it was an LLC, that's still a limited liability corporation. So regardless, you know, um, Melon Intoxicate is a brand that it just started, but mm, that's my baby. You know what I'm saying? And so again, that will also turn into a corporation. So like when I say these things, those are the things that I push harder than podcasting. If you pay attention to my social media, you see that Tamara the Don Inc. and Melon Intoxicate social media posts happen every day and multiple times a day for Tamara the Don Inc. There is a Monday, I mean a morning and an evening post. Monday through Friday, the weekends is the only time there's one. And then if you're in my Entrepreneurship Essentials Facebook group, you get a bonus stuff, bonus posts where like I'm giving y'all resources and links to this and that and whatever, and just extra tips related to having a solid foundation for building your brand or company. You know what I'm saying? So there is a lot that goes out every day podcasting, I do a Wednesday post because the YouTube is uploaded on Wednesday night. I do a Thursday morning post the day that the podcast drops on the audio platforms. I do a Saturday post with a little promo clip to let y'all hear a little bit of the episode. And then I do a Tuesday post that um, we'll have like the Apple and the Spotify and the YouTube link. And that's all I do. And I'm in a retweet group. So like other people can retweet this stuff. I'm actually in two retweet groups, but I don't push that blogging. I think four or five posts a week go out with that. That's new. It used to, it started with like just one and I'm kind of like, okay, well, let me push it a little bit more and act like I actually care about it, which I do. But again, those outlets are creative outlets for me. Those are not where I'm like trying to make money, trying to provide for my family. You know what I'm saying? Like I am with my company and the brand. So yeah, let's move on from that. I wanted to start with that because I don't even know. So, do to do to do. Okay, let's go here. So, let me give you a little bit more background information about me. Prior to working for myself, I worked in the social work field for over a decade, and I worked predominantly, if you sum up, the focus of every role that I have, which wasn't like, uh, I didn't job hop all like that, but it was workforce development. So teaching predominantly like job readiness skills um, to adults and teenagers, depending on where I work, life skills and all that stuff too, you know, goal setting, success and um, goal setting strategies, success. I can't even talk goal setting strategies, accountability, we'll just say that, right? So that's what I did. Professionalism, I literally taught ninth to 12th graders. That was the heavy like job readiness. Like I taught an academy where it's basically teaching them how to get and keep a job. So in some ways, I built my company up around, of course, the experience that I had, the stuff that I know I'm confident and knowledgeable about. But professionalism, it has always been something important to me. And professionalism is the way, it's the reason that I carry myself the way I do in the content creator space. So like if somebody, if I record an episode with somebody and they're a guest on my platform, I'm not late. If they're late, that's on them. And like they're, they'll usually text me or whatever. Most people are on time. But I make sure that I'm on time ready. I usually already have the um, link to the StreamYard scheduled 
to send to them 15 minutes ahead of time. Sometimes there's stupid email things and they don't get it, but it's not because I wasn't ready. You know what I'm saying? Timeliness is an important piece of professionalism. You want to honor people's time, especially if somebody is giving you their time to come on your platform. You know what I'm saying? Also, when I invite people on my platform, if I, first of all, it's generally not going to be anybody I don't have rapport with just because of the way my show is set up. But if for some reason I, I did that, anything I ask of anybody, it's going to be a mutually beneficial thing because that's, that's what networking is supposed to be. It's supposed to be mutually beneficial. It's not supposed to be just about what benefits me. It's supposed to be what benefits both of us. So like the people who participate in my karaoke battles, they get gifts. Now, unless they tell me they don't want it, that's the whole different thing. But if you don't say you don't want it, I am sending you something. You know what I'm saying? And so why? Because these people, I've had two karaoke battles, have spent hours, literally, because the battles are usually a couple hours long, performing on the internet in front of strangers, others in the podcast community. None of these people are like, already established singing artists. So there's going to be a level of whatever with karaoke. I usually will perform a song too, but you guys are doing this for me and my listeners. Yeah. Your supporters, you know, come through whatever too, but you're doing this as a favor to me. So the least that I could do because you are entertaining my people for two hours is I could give you a gift. Again, mutually beneficial. Now think about most content creators, especially the people that I already have rapport with, they would do it without even like, they didn't, I didn't like say, oh, if you do this, do this because I'm giving you this gift. I usually tell them about the gift after the fact, after they've already agreed to it. But I already know in my mind that I'm going to send them something because I appreciate you doing whatever, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm trying to think of, I don't generally like just ask people to do stuff for me without offering something in return. And the reason I'm, I'm dragging all this out because it's, it's to the point where it's starting to get on my nerves because more recently, this is what really pisses me off. Don't say you're going to do something and not do it. So recently, somebody followed me on Twitter. Of course, I followed them back because I saw that they were a content creator. And then people hop in your DMs immediately. Thanks for the follow. Okay, I get it. You want to seem appreciative. And I'm not saying you're not, but I literally only followed you because you follow me back. I mean, I only followed you back because you followed me. Prior to that, I had no idea, like, who you were. And I don't mean that rudely. That's just real. I got to follow. I check whatever. Okay. So you have in my DMS, you're like, thanks for the follow. You send me this whole paragraph about who you are, you know, your sales pitch. This is what I feel like it. We, we don't know each other prior to this. We we've, we've had no rapport. We haven't even laughed at jokes on the TL. Like you are literally a stranger. And then you're like, can I subscribe to your YouTube channel? Now, because I am trying to grow my YouTube channel, I say, okay, sure. Can you return the favor? Because I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel as well. I subscribed to them. I sent them the screenshot and they said, sure thing. Okay. So you said, sure thing. You could have said no, and I couldn't have necessarily been salty because I already agreed to subscribe to your YouTube channel. It's zero dollars to subscribe to somebody's YouTube channel. But the fact that you said no and then didn't carry through, and I know you didn't because when people, number one, my subscriber count didn't grow and it's been days since then. So you were just on bull. But two, if you subscribe to somebody's channel from your, like if, so like if I subscribe to your channel from my channel, you're going to get a notification because I have a YouTube channel or you're going to get an email. You're going to get something. I get them anyway. Like when other podcasters 
or other people who actually have a YouTube channel, I get, I'll get emails or whatever. But either way, even if I wasn't going to get an email because you subscribed to me from like some off account, because I know that happens too, my subscriber account didn't go up. So you know what I did, y'all? I unsubscribed to their YouTube channel. Then I unfollow them on Twitter because I'm I'm getting irritated with this self-serving, selfish way that y'all want to grow your brand or your company as if we're not all, especially in the indie podcast community. Now I'm, you know, growing my podcast isn't as much a priority, but I still treat it as such. You know what I'm saying? I still promote it. So whatever with that. But either way, you don't know that it's not the main priority. You you see that I'm a content creator. If you took two seconds to scan my bio, which is probably, I guess, why you follow me. I don't know. But you see that I'm an indie content creator just like you. So I'm grinding just like you. You know it's hard. You know there is such a man to put out consistent content. Like this is episode 114. So I have gone 114 weeks straight, no breaks, no nothing. There have also been bonus episodes. Man, shout out to Chris. I was just thinking about when we did the U series recap 10 weeks straight. That was intense because it was 10 weeks straight on top of my regular episodes. So it didn't replace an episode because I didn't want to take away from the people that come here just to hear about my life and y'all don't even watch you. So it was a bonus week, bonus episode, 10 weeks in a row, right? Plus everything else that I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Like it was a lot. So anybody who can consistently put out content, you don't have to go week straight. Some people will have seasons and will have a break in between seasons. I have seasons for organizational purposes only, but I don't take breaks. But you're not any less than if you take breaks. It's consistency regardless if you keep coming back to the mic, you know, to resume your show. So I say all that to say, y'all really, really, really got to start thinking mutually beneficial because I know I am not the only one that feels this way. You know what I'm saying? I am just someone who will speak out and try to make it a teachable moment either by tweeting or in the curriculum for the build a biz workshop that we'll be launching soon. It's actually going to launch online instead of in person. I'm going to start and I may just stay virtual because it's just easier. Plus I could reach people that don't necessarily live here that maybe want to be a part of it. I don't want to limit myself to just the people around here. And the reason why is because if I'm honest, they haven't really been the most like visibly supportive with what I'm doing. So it doesn't mean they don't support or don't even refer me to people, but I don't know, you know what I'm saying? So I don't want to limit myself to thinking the people around here are going to be the people that are really going to, you know, do whatever. But it's one of the things I teach in the workshop is networking etiquette, because it's kind of like there are many things that should be factored into starting your business and having a solid foundation. And it's not just having a good product or service. That's great. And that will often open doors for you, but a lack of professionalism, a lack, a lack of networking etiquette and such will also close doors. You know what I'm saying? There have been establishments, there have been service providers that I no longer um, deal with because of a lack of professionalism, even though they may have had great food or a great product or even be very talented at whatever service they're provided. Like, that's how I am, you know what I'm saying? And that matters. And if you want to grow and you want to elevate, you always got to keep that as part of your foundation. So, yeah, man, y'all got to stop being selfish. You just, you're selfish. And that's just what it is. It's me, me, me. I would appreciate this. First of all, I support who I support. I support pretty much almost any and everybody in the ways that is like realistic. So that's why I will tweet out when I'm listening to somebody's show. And somebody will be like, especially if I live tweet it 
ooh, I got to check this ap- episode out. That's why I do stuff like that. Like, that's a way that I support the retweet groups. It's a mutually beneficial group. We all agree to whatever. <sighs> but y'all that just, like, I'm not your fan. <laughs> like, I don't know you. You know what I'm saying? And I, I don't fan anybody like that. And not even celebrities. Again, I support people. But if I don't know you, why do I care about how much you would appreciate what I would do for you when you didn't tell me what you could do for me in return? This is networking. And even friendships should be mutually beneficial. Now, again, what I choose to do, like I tweet out when I listen to people's episodes, I don't expect that in return. It's dope when people do, but I don't expect that in return because that's what I'm choosing to do. There are people that those follow Fridays where they're like, you should follow this podcaster. I get tagged in a lot of those or Tuesday things or like at least several times a week, I'm getting tagged in something. Now it's about to be Black History Month. So shout out to all of y'all that when you see the, oh, the podcast of color, it's my time to shine. (laughs) y'all. Oh gosh. Sorry. But I'm getting a lot of those tweets because it's it's about to be February. You know what I mean? Those are ways that other people support. I don't do that because, man, when I do that, I feel bad when I forget people. And I know so many podcasters because the majority of my people that I follow are other content creators. You know what I'm saying? A jo- majority of the people that follow me are other content creators. So... <sighs> I, I like I feel bad when I leave people out. So that's why I don't do that. And I've said this on here before, but I do support in the ways that I can. But I'm not your fan. I'm not your secretary. Like, I don't know you. So I'm not going to pretend like I care. It's almost insulting because if you looked at my bio, you should see I'm a content creator too because it says it in every bio everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Except not TikTok. TikTok is a little bit different, but everywhere else where this actually happens, because it doesn't happen on TikTok, like it says that I'm a content creator just like you. So if you were not trying to be selfish and you were actually trying to network, like you would come in a different way. And so now I just ignore those messages. I'll read it and then I'll ignore it. I don't even make it a teachable moment for them. I used to, but then I'm just like, nah. But what I am going to do is I'm going to make a teachable moment on the timeline because I'm like, maybe there are other people that they don't realize this. So everybody needs to know, not like putting somebody on blast. Y'all know I don't get down like that. If I'm going to ever put anybody on blast, it's going to be on here because if I'm going to be that petty, I'm going to get a download, a stream a view on YouTube, some, you know what I'm saying? But just putting it out on Twitter. Nah. And even with that, I usually try to be kind of vague about stuff. I never say who or none of that because it's like, that's not even necessary. But yeah, I ignore those messages because it's annoying because we're over two years into this and it happens more and more. Now, on the flip side, I had somebody ask me, like they're newer to Twitter and they were asking me about like trying to help them grow their following So I was just like, hey, this is my encouragement. Just continue to network with the podcast community. People are pretty supportive. Understand that it's a marathon. You may look at, and I don't even know why I have as many followers as I do on Twitter, if I'm honest. But you may look at, I have all these followers, but I also have been podcasting for over two years. So I didn't start off with as many followers as I have. Matter of fact, when I started podcasting, I had like, less than 200 followers or something like that. And it has grown like, and I don't know why it's the only platform that has grown in the way that it's grown. But you know, what's funny is that's on my personal Twitter. So then what's frustrating is when I'm trying to grow my followers for like the Melody Intoxicate Twitter, the uh, Melody Intoxicate Instagram. Yeah, I got a Facebook page, but I know people don't be on Facebook like that. But I do have followers like from my friends and family and then like strangers, I guess. 
But uh, shout out to all y'all in case y'all listening too. <laughs> but trying to grow those has not been as quick, of course, because that's just not how it goes. So it's it's kind of frustrating in that sense because I'm like, so many are people are drawn to this. So then, but what I do is I'll share like all my Tamara the Dawn Inc. Content on Twitter goes to my personal Twitter. I only made a melon intoxicate Twitter because that will turn into a like something separate. And I just felt like it needed to have something separate for that and not just be tied into my personal Twitter. But let's get off this. Y'all got to do better with the networking is the point of me saying all of that. Again, my heart is just to help y'all do better and grow and become more professional because, again, I'm not the only one that feels this way. And the reason I know that is because we have these discussions in our Twitter retweet groups about how selfish people are, about how people are tired of people following them and then unfollowing them and just like stuff I talk about on here. I'm never the only one that feels this way. I may be I'm not going to say I'm the only one. I just talk about it on my platform and I'll tweet about it because if it's facts, it's facts. Now, you'll never see me and I could say never. You'll never see me on probably not even in life being disrespectful to people or degrading because that's just not who I am as a person. But if I spit some facts and I tweet it and you feel some type of way, you might got to check yourself. If you listen to this episode and you feel some type of way about what I'm saying, then you might got to check yourself because, again, these are all just unhealthy things in the community. Like, yeah, we got to come together. We got to grow together, We whatever. But you got to understand that you're not going to become successful stepping all over people to try to get to the top. You're actually, hmm, somebody tweeted this recently. You may not have the character to maintain what your gift, they didn't say like this, I'm kind of flipping it. But if you continue to step all over people, you may not have the character to maintain when you get there. You know what I'm saying? And that's where you see people, we see it a lot with social media where this cancel culture, which we don't even know if that's really real because do people really get canceled? It seems like they be still out here doing whatever, but they get a lot of negative pu pu publicity. Some people do stop messing with them. Like there have been people, there have been other content creators that I used to listen to your sh their show. Now, also y'all got to remember don't be trying to feel some type of way and think it's you just because I have been slower to listen to shows. I just, I have a completely different life that I can't listen to as many podcasts per day as I used to because I'm not sitting here doing mindless work like I was just reading reports all day or looking at, you know, notes all day with my previous job. Now it's like I'm having to use my brain a lot to create and sometimes I get distracted by other people's uh, content or whatever. So don't assume that I'm talking about you when I say this, but there have been content creators that I stopped listening to their show because of the way that I would see them conduct themselves online. And whether it was real or not, it was continued me seeing stuff that I'm like, eh, I'm not really for that. So I just stopped listening. There was no reason to say anything. You do you, you be you, you whatever, but I'm cool on consuming your content. Everybody is not for everybody. I'm not for everybody, obviously, because if I was for everybody, my listens would be way higher than what they are. But I appreciate the people that, you know, do come back every week and continue to rock with me. So let's move on to the next point. Speaking of podcasters, guys. And I've been seeing this a lot lately. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know who said that when you become a podcaster, I don't care how long you've been podcasting. I would say I've been consistently podcasting over two years. And I feel like when you do anything consistently for over two years, especially myself, you're going to continue to grow. Y'all who have been listening to this show from back when I just had the purple graphic, didn't have the logo. Y'all who know 
I've had four logos. Y'all who know, I've had like two or three different intros. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all is my OG listeners. So y'all know the growth that I've had as a content creator. Okay. So the stuff that I talk about with networking, social media efficiencies and stuff like that, it's just stuff that I've learned just trying to be efficient networking. I already knew that stuff prior to this because I had a professional career that we had to network and collaborate with people in order to make stuff happen. You know what I'm saying? But I say all that to say, just because you do something for a while could be longer than me. Cause there are a lot of podcasters that have been doing this longer than me. It does not mean that you are the gatekeeper and the authority and have the say so on who can and can't create a con I mean, a podcast who can and cannot create a YouTube. I see a lot of people saying just because this doesn't mean you should start a podcast, but how are you the authority on that? You know what I'm saying? Anchor is free. That's my hosting site. Anchor is free. It is free for people to start a podcast. There's, you may have to spend money on equipment. Maybe some people use their phones. I started off with a $30 mic that I plugged into my iPhone and that's how I, <clears throat> excuse me, that's how I started. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, let me drink. Let me, hold on. So like, I've been seeing a lot of that. I saw somebody tweet, and this is going to tie into part two, because or my last, I guess, negative point before I end on a positive note. I saw somebody say something like, you can't, uh, how did they say it? I, 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 want, I should have saved it because I usually bookmark, stu bookmark tweets when I'm going to refer to them, but I guess I didn't think I was going to talk about it. But uh, I saw somebody say, basically, like, you can't just freestyle a podcast show. That's kind of how they said it. But not exactly. This is me summarizing it. I need y'all to know that most episodes I freestyle. So, like, maybe you can't freestyle a show and maybe you need structure. I know people that write scripts for their shows. I commend you because I could never. Because I don't even like having to write the scripts for the company videos. I do write a script for that so that my thoughts are concise. But I don't even like doing that. So ain't no way I'm about to write no whole episode script. But there are people that do that. There are people that have bullet points. Sometimes I'll have that. But it's mainly bullet points of the stuff I don't want to forget. So remember to promote your YouTube. Remember to say like the beginning announcements or whatever. I have bullet points for that. That's about it. Petty Tam Tam Chronicles in certain episodes like with guests. I'll have bullet points. Only if I don't want to forget something. But other than that, depending on who it is, we're going to freestyle based on that topic. But most of my solo episodes are just me talking about whatever. You know what I'm saying? So to say what someone can't do just because that isn't your journey, and that's in all things, you got to stop doing that. But I'm seeing more and more where people are trying to act like you are the gatekeeper of the podcasting community and you're just not like and this isn't even talking about you're not talented you're not whatever but this is not some exclusive community where only some people can be a part of it and if you've heard a podcast that you didn't like the structure or you didn't like whatever just don't listen to it but to sit here and act like you have the say so on who can and cannot host the podcast y'all got to stop that Furthermore, those of y'all who don't have a podcast, those of y'all who could never hop on a mic every week, every two weeks, once a month, whatever, and consistently create content and edit and market and network and promote, those of y'all who could never do that, I really need y'all to stop because I'm also tired of seeing tweets and it's like, these aren't even people I follow. You know what I'm saying? That I see this stuff, but you know how Twitter is, but I'm tired of people saying 
stuff like I saw yesterday. Somebody was like, niggas have one deep conversation and then they think they want to start a podcast. And like, how is that hurting anybody? Just don't listen if you don't like it. But this person wasn't even a podcaster because I read through the thread just kind of seeing what other people were saying. And I just think it's funny because it didn't seem like any of them were content creators. And it's kind of like, man, y'all got to put some respect, as I said before, on this free entertainment that y'all get. I appreciate all the content creators, all the podcasters that consistently create content because I listen to podcasts more than I watch TV. Like usually when I'm working and whatever, I'll listen to podcasts when it's work that I don't need to like focus. It's it's weird because then sometimes it's helpful. It just really kind of depends like what I'm creating or also where I'm at mentally, emotionally, because if I'm already struggling to come up, not come up with stuff, but struggling to stay focused or struggling to have the motivation or whatever, sometimes I don't need to be distracted with a podcast or whatever. But nevertheless, I appreciate y'all, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not paying for this, you know what I'm saying? Like, I pay for Apple Music. I don't have to pay for Apple Podcasts, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I really, really, really need, though, us podcasters, we got to, us indie podcasters, that's what makes me sad about it because it's like, bruh, you're in the trenches just like we are. Like, we see celebrities that because they have that celebrity platform already, they could literally talk about nothing and have a bunch of listeners just because their brand that they've already built. Not not knocking that, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm hoping as I continue to build my brand, people will subscribe, but it's not going to be Like, I'm not going to be out here just doing whatever just because, oh, it's me. Nah, but I'm just saying, I'm not knocking it because you worked hard to get your brand, but we don't have that as indie podcasters. So then for you to like act like you're the gatekeeper, act like the mean girl or the the bully on social media, like, ah, it's just giving, it's giving, (laughs) but it's just, it just really seems like you're miserable And you're trying to make yourself feel better by trying to down talk somebody else. And that's not cool. Like we already got enough going on with this pandemic. That in and of of itself is enough. But people got like real problems out here as you probably do too, because we all have problems. So like, you're not the gatekeeper. You know what I'm saying? If that applies to you, it applies to you. If it doesn't, don't be trying to figure out who I'm talking about. Because again, a lot of these are not even necessarily people I follow or whatever, or people I know, but I'm just seeing it a lot more frequently. And I know podcasting is becoming more and more a thing. It's kind of interesting because, um, even business like on LinkedIn, I've been on there and I'm, there's a lot of content creation on there mainly people post memes and like um that some people will do videos or whatever at least from what i see in my feeds but they're talking about how podcasting is a way you know how you can break this down and do whatever or people that i'm like in these um different business groups on facebook and i got an invitation to like be a part of something which is like a master class and part of it is teaching people how to podcast and in these groups I don't really talk about the podcasting side of things because that's not it's business groups you know what I'm saying but it's just funny cuz it's like I don't like I've been on that like podcasting came first you know what I'm saying so I say all that to say I understand podcasting is becoming like bigger than even what it was when I started because I you know but you are not the gatekeeper you're just you're just not you know what I'm saying you are only in control of you and tweeting about how everybody can't start a podcast yes literally everybody can if they want to like you sound like you have some authority but you really don't and it's really unnecessary because again just don't listen like Nobody's putting a gun to your head and forcing you to listen. And nine times out of 10, 
I bet you haven't even listened to these people. I bet you're just tweeting just to say things, which leads me to my next point. So many people agreed with this person who said you can't just not have a structure and not have whatever for a show. You know what I'm saying? So many people agreed with that. But this person is also very popular because I went to their page to see like who they were, like, are, are you even a podcaster? Apparently there are. It's not anybody I follow. I don't even remember what the person's name was. But I did see that they had a lot of po a lot of followers. Man, y'all, just because somebody is popular, this is another thing that happens on social media. Somebody is popular and you just agree just because they're popular. I know that's not always the way that happens, but that is that it that does happen. You know what I'm saying? Man, you gotta stop. Like a solid argument. And I looked up, I looked this up because I remember learning this in college. And sometimes when you say someone, I'm not gonna argue with you, and they're they're like, I'm not arguing. Okay, let me tell y'all what an argument actually is, which actually, hold on, let me, because I have the, the parts of a good argument, and I am very much someone who, if I really get into a topic, I'm going to have receipts, I'm going to look up the definition of words, anybody who has had any sort of conversation with me knows that's just how I am, because I learned in college, you got to cite your source, you know what I'm saying? But I've kind of always been like that. Like, that's just how I'm wired, where if I'm going to talk about something, I'm going to talk about it. If I don't know, then I'm going to tell you I don't know. Like, I'm not going to talk just to sound like I know what I'm talking about. So a argument is one, it is an oral disagreement or a verbal opposition, but it's also a discussion, excuse me, it's a discussion involving differing points of view, a debate. So if you have your point of view and I have my point of view and we're having a discuss a discussion where we're sharing our different points of view, that is an argument. It doesn't mean it's violent. doesn't mean we're yelling at each other, or cussing each other out or any of that stuff. But if we have differing points of view and we are having a discussion, we are having an argument. It is okay and it is healthy to have good debates, good discussion. Not all arguments should lead to like the friendship over or whatever. Like, what are we kids? You know what I'm saying? Especially at our grown ages. So I looked something up though to give you a little bit more information. The purpose of argument writing, so let's talk about writing, but orally it's the same thing. Pause verbal is to convince the other person that a point of view is valid or to persuade them to take a specific action. Information is used, but it is organized based on these major components of an argument. The claim, the reason, the evidence, the counterclaim, and the rebuttal. That is what an argument is. So folks will say something and be so passionate about it and just because they're popular and passionate, y'all agree with them. Not all of y'all, but I do see stuff. And I saw with this person, so many people were like, yeah, so-and-so has spoken and da-da-da-da-da. But I literally just told y'all, and I tell y'all often, I don't even know what I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to just talk. And people will tell me, oh, that was a great episode. I don't know if it's because y'all liked what I talked about with my life. I've always been a good conversationalist, you know what I'm saying? I'm also a writer, so that's, you know, whatever. But it's like, you're saying people can't do something that I do almost every week, and I know I'm not the only one that freestyle shows, you know what I'm saying? I just know that I do, but I know I'm not the only one. So, like, I'm not going to say just because you can't do it, but I've talked about this People will try to limit what you think, what you know you can do, and try to say you can't do this because they can't. And then people will agree when neither one of y'all are right. Because if you're saying no one can do this, that's not true because I do it most of my solo episodes. I'm not going to say all of them because I usually tell y'all when I have notes so I don't forget things. But most of my episodes, especially the ones where... I don't have anything particular that I really want to talk about. Then I'll just talk to y'all about 
my life, whatever comes to mind. Sometimes afterwards, I'll be like, dang, I meant to say this. See, this is why I have bullet points when I don't want to forget something. But other than that, I just be talking. And I have a steady flow of listeners that have stuck with me this whole time. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's just, it's a consistent, like I don't have hundreds of listeners every episode and that's okay. I don't have to. I've always said, even if I only had one person that consist- consistently listened to my show and consistently came back, I would do this all just for that one person. If they're obviously getting something out of me sh- sharing my insecurity, me messing up on my words and not editing it out because that's just who I am in real life. So I'm not about to get on this mic and pretend like I'm this polished speaker when I always mess up on my words. Now my company videos, I do edit those down a little bit more. And it's mainly just so it's concise because I don't want it to be too long and whatever. But other, And I have a script for that, for that very reason, but I hate it because I just feel like I don't feel the freedom that I have with podcasting, which is why like podcasting is my favorite now. Cause even with blogging, I love blogging, but writing is different. Like writing has to make sense. Writing also, the thing about with podcasting is if I say something, I can continue talking until I feel like I made my point clear for you to understand it. So I could say it different ways or I may even go away from it and come back to it when I I could do all that in the episode. When you write, you have to get as much as as much of your point out so that the reader understands in like a more limited. uh, Like usually my blogs are. uh, Two on. I try to make it over 200 words for sure, but they're not like super long. They're usually around 200 and something, maybe three something words, 300 and something words, but not really too much more than that, just because it's about a thought and a feeling generally. And so within that amount of whatever that I've decided, this is how long I want my blogs to be, then it's like, I don't like, I have to make sure though that you feel where I'm coming from. And so it's a little bit more, um, there's more pressure. I, writing is still my first love, you know what I'm saying? But it's it's just different than podcasting. And so, yeah, kind of lost my train of thought on, oh yeah, yeah, y'all got to stop agreeing with people just because they popular, like just because they're popular or a celebrity, man, we all human and we all can feel passionate, passionately about something and be dead wrong. You know what I'm saying? Hell me too. You know what I'm saying? But this is something that I know for a fact I do often and I'll, which is the whole freestyle episodes. And then I also see a lot of people agree with stuff that I'm just like, there is no facts that are backing up. There is no evidence that are backing up your claim, but people really are just agreeing with you. And y'all really got to stop doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like be authentic. People could tell when you're not being authentic. People could tell when you're miserable and you just want to whatever. People can also tell when you're really insecure and you're just trying to sound like you're secure. Like I've been seeing a lot on, uh, man, all social media is that security or confidence is silent and insecurity is what's the loudest. The average confident person, if you don't believe them or if you don't agree with them or whatever, they'll, okay, I agree to disagree or, okay, that's fine. You could feel that way or you could think that or whatever. Like they really don't care, not because they don't care about you, but your validation doesn't give them worth. And so when you're out here trying to seek validation from other people, that is because there is some insecurity. Now, we all have insecurities. I have them. But it's one thing to have insecurities. It's another thing to be insecure to the point that you are seeking validation from any and everybody. You know what I'm saying? You need somebody to tell you that you matter or whatever 
like that's a very unhealthy place to be because for one, people are always going to let you down. You're never going to really get that validation that you are seeking from anybody else. You know what I'm saying? But I say all that to say, yeah, just because people are popular and just because they are passionate about what they are dead wrong about, man, you ain't got to agree with them. You know what I'm saying? You can stand on your own. You can ignore it. I'm not saying you got to be out here beefing with people on the internet because you already know my motto. If it's not food, yeah, I'm a beef off some food. That's that's for sure, for sure. All on the TL. Um, I'm trying to think what else. That's really about it. Food. Like all of my Twitter debates have mainly been about food. I don't really anything else is just a regular conversation and it, it doesn't go hours and hours or whatever. And I'm more so thinking about the candy corn debates that That'll come back around in October because that's just what we do. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, you got to, I'm not saying you got to be out here beefing with people, but you you don't have to agree just to, I don't know if you're trying to get that person's approval or if you're just trying to gain some sort of attention or what it is, but like, bruh, social media is not that serious. I promise y'all, if I didn't have a podcast and a company and a brand and me understanding the amazing tool that social media can be for networking with like-minded people. That's the number one thing is networking because I've learned a ton from people like in the retweet groups or just relationships I've built with people. Like I can call or text different people that I know have knowledge about different things. And then there are people that can hit me up and do the same thing if they feel like they know I have knowledge about something or whatever. So like, those are the people that I have rapport with that can just hit me up and be like, hey, can you help me with this or hey, whatever. But the thing about it is I know I could ask the same thing and return, return to that person because we've built rapport going back to that. But outside of that, if I didn't have these things, I wouldn't even be on social media like that because... I never was before. I had a Twitter for years and I couldn't really figure out how it worked at first. Not like old people not knowing technology, but just I didn't understand. It moved too fast. That's what it was. Like if you're not on there a lot, you will miss a lot. You know what I'm saying? And like me coming on every blue moon like I used to, I'm like, man, I don't I don't really mess with Twitter like that. But for networking, it has been my favorite platform. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, man, you got to stand on your own. Let me make sure I got all my negativity out the way. And it's it's not really negative. These Petty Tam Tam episodes, I call it petty. But again, is it petty if it's true? It's really just the episodes where I go in on stuff that either I experienced personally or I saw a lot or whatever that I feel like is unhealthy and it's something I just want to speak on. But the heart behind it at the end of the day is like, can we be kind to each other? Like I may be assertive. I may be um, very blunt and all that clear communication, but I'm, I haven't been disrespectful this episode. I haven't called anybody out their name. I don't even really do that just in general. I could say my point without being disrespectful, you know what I'm saying? So it's like the heart behind it is always, man, let's be healthy mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and in our relationships. And like, those are things that I just feel like are not healthy. I feel like, man, y'all newer content creators that are out here, I love the fact that I've been a podcaster for as long as I've been. And I have knowledge that like podcasters that are just starting out and we're in the retweet groups and they have questions. I love when I have knowledge about something that I can help you with because I know there have been people that have given me knowledge over the years. So like paying it forward, you know what I mean? I'm saying, or like people who are business owners that don't really understand social media, all like that, whatever ways I could help people, I can. But the thing about it is like, man, 
it's it's just it's unhealthy when you make a content creator feel like they got to be doing a certain thing a certain way the way you do it for their podcast. I just I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't like you making a newer podcaster feel like, oh man, or feel insecure because podcasting is a lot. Now I'm somebody, you could tell me, oh, you can't do this. I don't really care what you're talking about. So this episode is not because you made me feel some type of way because I'm going to do my show how I want to do it regardless. And whoever listens, listens, y'all see, I just do whatever on here. And if you rock with me, you rock with me. And if you don't, it's cool. I mean, no love lost. You know what I'm saying? But newer people or maybe people that are like just, I don't know, insecure in general. I don't know. Like, I don't like that. I don't like the idea that folks really think they're the gatekeepers out here of the podcasting world because literally anybody can make a podcast and they don't need your permission. They don't need your guidance if they didn't ask for it. And like, you almost sound like a hater. And I'm just like, for what? When you know how hard we have it in the indie community, like you're in the trenches with us. Just because you've been podcasting longer for if it's somebody who's been podcasting longer, if you're still have a full time job. And I don't say this like in a shady way because I'm not getting paid to podcast either. That's why I'm very clear about that when people try to think they're going to speak on. I wish I got paid to podcast, but then again, I don't know because I don't know what that would look like. I always think of like record deals and record labels and I'm, I'm, I don't know about all that. But if you're still working a full-time job and podcasting has not progressed from that's your sole source of income, man, are you really the gatekeeper? Like, uh, I don't know. And then even if you are, man, just like with music, there's so many different types of artists. There's so many t different types of whatever. There are people that only listen to true crime podcasts and that's it. And that's what they want. There are people that only listen to finance podcasts or only listen to spiritual podcasts. I listen to all kinds of podcasts. That's how I am with all the things, though. I listen to all kinds of music, movies, TV, when I watch it, all that. You know what I'm saying? But there are certain people that like what they like, and somebody else might like it. So, like, please stop being a hater, guys. Like, let's be kind. Let's spread positivity and all that good stuff. So. I think that's all I have of the Petty Tam Tam Chronicles. You never know when these episodes are going to come back around. It's so funny because I actually wasn't even sure I was going to do another Petty Tam Tam episode. And yet here we are because it rolls up in my spirit. You feel me? But on a positive note, guys, those of you that are working towards a goal, whatever, and, and let's say it's a long-term goal. Please, please, please make sure that you are celebrating milestones along the way. And that's something I learned when I was in college that celebrate the milestones along the way as you are working towards your degree because it just it keeps you motivated. It makes you feel good, like you've made some progress. Because uh, let's see, I started college in December of 09 and I graduated May of 2015. So that's four and a half years. And within that four and a half years, I took like six months off and, and took every summer off too. But, um, but yeah, four and a half years, it took me to get my degree. But I bet you, I bet you that every time a class term ended, and I say it like that because when I was at the university, it was um, semesters. But when I was at the community college, before I transferred to the university, it was like trimester. So they would have like three sessions per year and not, or something like that. Or maybe they had quarters. I don't know, but it wasn't semesters. You know what I'm saying? I bet you whenever a session would end, I would celebrate that I got one class out the way and I was one class closer to graduating. And I say this because the other day, and I, I posted this on Instagram, I, I use Canva. That's the design, the online design tool that I use for everything. When I say everything, 
my podcast overlay and my podcast background. I created that on Canva. All my social media templates and content or whatever I created created in Canva. All my podcast video, oh, I don't even know what you call it, video templates or whatever for when I do the uh, promo tweets and posts or whatever. I do all that on Canva. All my episode cover art I created in Canva. Hell, even my build a biz presentation that as soon as that's done, that's what I'm working on now. The curriculum has been written, but now I'm working on the actual presentation to go with it. And it's like an extra project in addition to everything else I'm doing. So it's it's taken me a little bit longer, but I kind of knew this because it's like when I wrote the curriculum, you just got to keep coming back to it. But once that's done, that's when I'm going to launch the online workshop. It's basically going to be a two and a half hour workshop workshop where I'm going to uh, teach the seven fundamentals. I can't talk. The seven fundamentals of what I feel like are not what I feel like, what I know based on what I've learned in my own journey, but also just research I've done or whatever on what are the essential things to have a solid foundation for your brand or company. Really, I mean your company because it's build a biz, but it's also stuff, man, oftentimes a brand turns into a company, kind of like Mel and Toxic K will. But um, yeah, man, celebrate your milestones. You know what I'm saying? And Canva sent me this random thing that they were like, congrats on a thousand designs. And I think I've had Canva for maybe two years. I don't know though, because I don't know. I don't know that I've had them the whole time that I've been podcasting because I wasn't doing as much in the beginning. And yeah, so we'll say two years just to be safe or whatever. So over the course of two years, I've done over a thousand designs and I just felt like, wow, that's so dope. Mainly because that just shows that I've been consistent because like, especially now that I create so many social media posts per week and I haven't been, I don't know, I've just been feeling kind of like drained and unmotivated lately, but obviously I've still been getting it done or whatever. So normally I'll take a day to just do all the content for a day, but then there have been weeks where I don't take that day. So then I'll just be like, okay, well, I know I at least got to do the post for tomorrow or the next, you know what I'm saying? So I'll have stuff like that. And it's like, so regardless of how it gets done, it gets done. Like y'all don't miss content except for when I was sick. That's I literally couldn't. But outside of that, me not feeling like it, that ain't got nothing to do with my responsibility. Like I've created this schedule. I've created whatever. I got to stick to it, which is funny because I stick to it like I'm accountable to a boss and I'm technically not. This is my own whatever, but that's just how I am when it comes to responsibility and stuff like that. So it's like celebrating that consistency is so cool. They made some little graphic and I posted it on social media. People responded to it, liked it or whatever. But even if y'all hadn't, I feel good because I'm just like, wow, I've been consistent. And I know I've kicked it up a notch in what I've been doing because I started doing cover art for every every episode. I definitely wasn't doing that in the beginning. I do so many different types of social media postings every week. Definitely wasn't doing that in the beginning. I have a template for everything, for blogging, for podcasting, for Tamra the Don Inc. and Melanin Toxic A, for merch promo. Then I have memes that I've created. Like I use Canva to even, so like the logos I paid for, but like kind of like designing the different designs. I'll use the logo. So the man, the woman, the boy, and the girl, they're not a family. So like, that's not a mom and a dad and a boy and a girl. They're just, I mean, a son, and a daughter, there's just a man, a woman, a boy and a girl. But, um, so I, I'll use them, but I'll add to it or do whatever, you know, add the words or add what I do all that in Canva. So I've done over a thousand 
I mean, I've done a thousand, well, I've done some since then. So I've done over a thousand designs and that's just like, wow, that's so dope. And it was just a cool way to like pause and celebrate because the thing about it is we're never really going to arrive. Like even I, I saw, oh, I got to get my company launched. Okay. I did that. Then there's other goals. Oh, I got to launch. I can't wait till I launch Melon Intoxicate. Okay. I launched it. And then there's other goals, you know, like there's always going to be more, especially if you're somebody like me who doesn't want to remain stagnant or if, like, that's just how I've always kind of been. Developer is one of my top five Gallup strength fighter strengths. I don't know if you're familiar with that. So it's like, I'm always trying to grow and improve or whatever. Now the, the backside or, or the basement of that, as they call it. So it's kind of like the downfall of that is sometimes you're never really satisfied. And so I have to be very careful and have that balance of contentment. And this is part of why celebrating the milestones helps with that, because otherwise you're just like, I never, you never arrive. Like even when I graduated from college, it's always, I can't wait till I do this. And then I get there and then it's like, okay, now what? Like, that's how it was when I was, uh, when I graduated college. So yeah, y'all celebrate your milestones. It is a great way to really just keep you motivated, give you something to feel good about whatever that looks like. It could be treat yourself to something. I mean, I just posted it on social media and the little graphic was cool and then people will like it or whatever. But other than that, that was just something so random that I was like, oh, wow. And then I'm like, I guess that is worthy of celebration because I've been consistent with designing stuff on Canva. I love it. I love it for everything. That's like I said, also where I'm creating my presentation instead of using like PowerPoint. And I like it because it has so many design elements and just so many different things that you can um, do within it or whatever. So yeah, y'all, that is my encouragement to y'all. Cause again, you know, I wasn't going to just end it on a positive note, but yeah, man, support your people. I'm going to add one more thing and then I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. <sighs> Shout out to Baylor, and here's why. And, man, y'all know I've been rocking with Baylor since before he did this, so you know this is not why I rock with Baylor. Baylor has always just been a dope person in the podcast community. Met him on Twitter, like, maybe two years ago. I listened to his show first, and, again, I tweet at people because not like, ooh, I want your attention, but I've always looked at it like, Hey, this is how I could support by saying this is the show that I'm listening to. And if you have something that really just sparks me, I'll live tweet the episode just just like I do when I watch Power, you know what I'm saying, or other TV shows or movies. And so um Baylor is he was a karaoke uh karaoke actually he was the karaoke champ actually. <laughs> Which it was amazing that he won because, you know, it was it was it was a very interesting battle. But he was a karaoke champ. But even if he had not won, he still would have got a gift regardless. And so uh, his gift was a melon intoxicate hoodie. But it was a it's a design that's not even out. I don't even know if um, I don't know if I'm gonna launch it or when I'm gonna launch it. Um, Chris got one too. Ivan is this is what I was saying earlier that unless people say they don't want it, he said I didn't have to send him anything, that he was just happy to do it. So I was just like, okay. Um, but the only reason I'm telling y'all that is because I'm telling you why I gave him that hoodie. And I don't, in a way, I don't care if you think I didn't give it to him for the purposes of like whatever, but because I made this whole big deal about make sure stuff is mutually beneficial. And I do this, that, and the other, and everybody knows who was in the karaoke battle that was a part of it. That's the only reason he didn't get a, like a personalized hoodie or whatever. But the reason why I'm bringing Baylor up is because if anybody knows Baylor, anybody knows that Baylor makes like, he makes custom made, like handmade, like specialized design stuff. 
he does that. I don't do that. I use e-commerce. And so I'll design it and put it together and put the words how I want it. But Teespring fulfills it. So I don't, I don't do any of that because I don't have time to do any of that. You know what I mean? And that's an easy way so that I can make some money, but also not have to do all that he does. But I say all that to say the importance of you surrounding yourself with people who really just rock with you, who really, I don't want to say believe in you, but like support you. People who want to see people win, they're not going to be intimidated by if somebody is doing something similar than them. Like I just literally talked about how dope his merchandise is. I have t-shirts that he's made for the podcast happy hour that I wear frequently. Um, when I wear anybody's stuff, I'll at them on social media so everybody can see where I got it. There are hoodies that he's, um, and there's other people too that have hoodies that I'm going to get. I just don't got the money right now. But when I, if I said to you, I'm going to get this. I am because like, I really like what you did. So like, and I'm going to promote it and I'm going to whatever, just like I always have, like, this is nothing new. I've been selling merchandise before this just for my podcast, but I was still wear other podcasters merchandise. But the reason why I bring up what Baylor did is because man, everybody who is a content creator, because y'all do it more than like people who are not. And I get that because you understand the marketing and the promoting and or whatever. Those of y'all that have bought stuff from me or yeah, those of y'all that have bought stuff from me, you t- you at me, you tag the brand. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I sent him this hoodie or whatever. And, um, I mean, I figured he'd post a picture cause that's what people usually do. Man, this man has made, <laughs> like three videos at this point and tags me every time. And he's make sure that you can see the brand and he puts the same energy into it as when he makes the videos for his own hoodies. And he does that for anybody's stuff that he wears. Like uh, Shan from She Gets a Pod, she creates merchandise. I've bought a coffee mug from her. But she also, I think he had like a a mask on or something of hers. And he puts that same energy into supporting the people that he rocks with. And what's so dope about that is because he could be like, I don't know, these people who don't want to support other people. He didn't have to post it because it was a gift. I mean, even if you buy it, you don't have to posted and you don't have to help me promote my brand. Like I appreciate that. You don't have to do that. He had to do that. He didn't have to make a video. He didn't have to do anything because it was a gift and he had done something for me to earn that gift. Even though <coughs> excuse me, he forgot. Like it took me a minute to get it to him. And they both have forgotten that I had even said that and I'm like, well I know you forgot, but I ain't forget. You know what I'm saying? But like my point of bringing all this up is that it's like him doing that. It really stirred within my heart the importance of surrounding yourself with the right people. And it's not about surrounding yourself with people that you feel like you'll benefit from. That's not what I'm saying. It's if you're going to surround yourself with people and if you're going to maybe have people on your platform or if you're going to talk to people or text people or whatever, man, just make sure it's it's people that like actually, excuse me, Lord, hold on. Let me drink some water anyway. Just make sure it's actually people that like actually rock with you and like really support you because it's like, I see a lot of people complaining on social media about the lack of support and I see it in my Facebook friends mainly. I'll see post after post of people who are business owners that are like frustrated about the lack of support. And I don't know what these people have done to step upside of their comfort zone and like network with like-minded people network with strangers that are like-minded like it can be a little uncomfortable 
trying to get to know strangers or whatever. But if you have a common goal, it makes it a little easier. So that's why I love with the retweet groups. When a new person comes, I say, what's up? I'll like, we'll have conversations besides just sending our tweets. I'll engage in those conversations when I'm not busy or whatever. I'll contribute whatever I can to the group. And like, that's why I don't feel super salty. I don't have high expectations from my Facebook friends, if I'm honest, because of the track record they've shown me where they don't interact with my content a ton, which, okay, cool. I don't have many expectations from y'all, though, if you happen to be listening, because of what you show me, but you also don't see me complaining about it. Why? Because I have met some of the dopest, most supportive people he did not have to make that video. And it's it's just like such a dope, it's like <laughs> the best promo because how you promote the brand, like how you do the picture and all that stuff, that matters too. You know what I'm saying? And he tagged other podcasters in it because he mentioned them in the video because it was this whole production, because that's how Baylor is. Like, he just makes so many different videos. But the thing about it is, so then because he did that, then they retweeted the video. So then so many more eyes got on my brand, and it wasn't even his brand. Like, that's what's so wild about it and why I'm like, and I said this on Twitter already. I, like, retweeted it twice. First, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is the best, you know, whatever of anybody wearing the brand ever, because the man is extremely talented when it comes to the edits and the transitions. And I don't know, I tried to ask him for TikTok tutorial advice once. And it's not like he wouldn't help me. He was just like, he just kind of does whatever. And he was like, you got to just keep doing it. And so I just kind of was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So the more that I do TikTok videos, I'm, I'm learning different things and whatever. But yeah, the man is just extremely talented. So it was like the best video ever. That was like the first tweet. But then I really thought about how much effort he put into the video. And I know that because he texted me the night before and was like, hey, I'm posting another video. So he had already posted a video that I was just like, this video was some hallucinogenic, super dope video. So that was, and if you haven't seen it already, you will see it because I've been saving these videos because, hey, this is a great way to promote. But he had that same energy when I had the karaoke battle. I asked them, hey, can y'all make a video um, so we can hype people up? This is why, yeah, hell yeah, you get a gift. Like, Y'all got full-time jobs in your own platforms and you're doing stuff for my event. So yes, I'm going to give you a gift. But this man made like three videos. And then when he won, he made another video. Like he just, that's just what he does. You know what I'm saying? But my point of all this, man, you got to surround yourself with the right people when you're working towards something. Man, the pod crew man, they hear it more than anybody, how much I either, like, I don't know, I'm frustrated by something, or I'm busy, or I show them all my designs before anybody else, so I'm like, hey, y'all, this is the new thing, or whatever, or blah, 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 they don't have to pay attention, or, you know, not speak on it, or whatever, but there's never, now, we may miss something, because sometimes if you're not in the group, you might come back and it's 150 messages deep. But outside of that, we're not going to intentionally ignore something somebody puts in the group. There's not been a time that if we saw something in the group, we just didn't respond to. It. I don't care if it's good or bad, mundane, random, whatever. But that's when you have like real friends. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Baylor, he obviously ain't in the group chat, but again, man, he didn't have to do all that, especially when he has his own brand that he's growing and, and 
you know, people are buying stuff and whatever. So it's like, man, surround yourself with the right people. And then if you are somebody, man, support people. Anytime I see somebody win on Twitter, it could be a stranger talking about, I just bought a house. I just lost some weight. I just this, I just that. I'm going to retweet it and I'm going to put the celebration, little confetti uh, emoji because, man, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what's up. Another. Uh, She's from Black Girls Do Stuff. I think she's Lizzie Angel on Twitter. She does like food. I'm going to just say she's a chef. <laughs> she, I don't even know what her official title is, but she does like she has a cookbook. She'll do a lot of cooking content and like um, she's a po I met her as a podcaster. So that's how I met her. But then I've as I've continued to follow her, her journey. She actually does a lot of cooking, like shows and content and all this stuff. And she's been having some really amazing milestones lately. And when you meet people on Twitter, and even if you don't meet them in real life, when you interact with people a lot, you feel like, you know, all oh, this, the homie or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So like, she's somebody else who seeing her have these amazing milestones, it's awesome. And I'm super happy for her. Vivi, that's another one. She, I don't even know if she podcasts anymore. I met all these people as podcasters, but dude, she's like in medical school or something like that. She just tweeted something today about getting to be a part of some hospital, got an A on this. And I've like watched her journey on social media, of course. Oh, I'm dropping stuff. My bad. But uh, it's just, man, like, be happy for people. That's my whole point. Be supportive. Like, be a good person. If you're complaining on social pe social media about people supporting you and you're not supportive, uh, you might want to switch it up. But I don't complain on Facebook about y'all not supporting me or you're not sharing my stuff. Sometimes I'll but hey, this is three ways that are free that you can support an entrepreneur. Whatever you do with that, you do it. I've started to see a lot more, even if it's just likes, even that helps. But I don't complain about y'all not because I got this whole other world, a whole new world. Okay. But anyways, this whole other world of people who like really support me, really encourage that side of what I do. And it's just, I don't really trip. I just feel like if you're good to people, people will be good to you. It might not always be the people that you either are or were good to, but somebody's going to be good to you because what you put out is going to come back to you. And I guess maybe that's why so many, I get so many followers on Twitter because I People know me as somebody who's supportive and whatever. Maybe that's why. I don't know. It's mind-boggling how much that platform has grown in comparison to any other one. And it just continues to grow. And I'm I'm not even like trying to grow it. And I don't say that like pridefully. It's just weird because I remember there was a time where I was like, oh, I almost got. 500 followers. I remember that. That was about this time two years ago. And I'm like, can can you guys retweet this so I could get to whatever? And I got there. And that was about the last time I did that because it seems like ever since then it's been like this rapid thing. Like, yeah, it's, it's just wild. Um, so yeah, um, be supportive, be good to people. I can't believe this episode is as long as it is. But hey, man, I had to get it out. We ain't did a Petty Tam Tam episode in a minute. I don't know when it's coming back. Not saying it won't, but I never know. Unless I have a series, it's whatever. Whatever happens, happens, unless I have certain ideas. So y'all come back next week. We have Jack of All Trades, Volume 3. And I have a guest. He's been on the show before. Um, but this is more so to just highlight that aspect of his life as a jack of all trades. So Josh, he was on here, man, I want to say towards the beginning of my journey, him and Dequisha were on there. So this was like 
December of 2019, I think, was the last time he was on there. And then after that, I have Melon Intoxication. So that is a monthly series. So Jack of All Trades is a monthly series. So there's going to be that every month. Melon Intoxication is a new series that starts the second week of February. So the first Thursday of the month is going to be Jack of All Trades every month. Second Thursday of the month is going to be Melon Intoxication, where basically I'm highlighting a black man or black woman that I feel like embodies what Melon Intoxicate stands for. So if you are someone who I feel like you cause feelings of euphoria because you are like just so dope, you know what I'm saying? And it, it's more than just that, but I, I'm starting a series because again, the brand was started to celebrate the beauty found within melanated people. And so how can I have a platform and not have that be a part of it? You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, this platform is about my life and the ways that I'm trying to grow, but as it continues to transform, you're seeing I'm highlighting other people that I feel like are lining up with where I'm at. So the reason why the Jack of all trades came about is because I realized that's kind of how I am. You know what I'm saying? So I want to highlight other people. Melon intoxication, the brand is to highlight the beauty found within us. You know what I'm saying? So I got to highlight people. So um, this young, he's a black male teacher that we actually used to work together. So that's how I met him. But yeah, man, I actually just got done editing it. Such an encouraging, it was a really good conversation that was just, I don't know, I don't want to say refreshing. And, I, and that's the only word that comes to mind because I'll hear Baylor say that about certain episodes. But it was just like, if ever I, which I wasn't, but if I was in a place that I was like tired of podcasting, which I'm not, but if I was there, that episode like refreshed me and like made me excited about podcasting it. And I don't even know why, you know what I'm saying? But it was just, yeah, really good conversation. Um, and so that is the second Thursday of February. So I already have those recorded. So those are the next two weeks when I know what it is. Sometimes I'll tell you what it is when it's something like that. But other than that, then we'll see what happens after that. Again, on my YouTube channel, Pen Tam Z, the Poetry Collective. Check that out. Penrose, his piece is called Random Thoughts. We have another live show. That will be February 25th, which is a Friday, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, 6 Pacific. I don't know an exact date on the next podcast happy hour. I We just had it. So if you missed that, the link to all previous podcast happy hour live streams is always in the episode notes. Follow the rest of the hosts. I mean, the, the rest of the crew. Next month is going to be on Autumn's platform is what I do know. I just don't have a date. But as always, we'll let you know when we know and we'll talk about it on social media. And I guess that is it. So I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this episode. I will talk to y'all soon. Bye. Ladies and gents, this concludes transmission. Tune in next time for a whole new edition, another adventure and mission to share, be heard, and clarify the vision of this whole new world for... Damn.